I think it is an interesting question. Why get married? The divorce rate is not 50%, it's over 90% is the next comment. Well, I've looked at stuff that it seems like as far as government data in the states, it's somewhere around 50%. But if you go and you look at the work by John Gottman, or if you look at the work by Tony Robbins, they'll say it's like 67%. I covered that in the book by John Gottman. I also heard Tony Robbins say that not that long ago. It's an interesting quote from Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, our third president, where he just said that basically to summarize that the goal of legal professionals is to create business for themselves by making things more complicated than they need to be. And if they are more complicated, then that means that they are more necessary, that their demand for their services is increased, which means that they can charge higher fees. So there's this incentive within that business to continue to make things more complicated. Boycott marriage and the LGBT community wants to suffer through this too? Question mark. Thank you for posting. You are doing a service. Men do not get married. This is horrifying. I really have had the same emotional reaction. I was like, this is a total nightmare. Like, it, this seems credible. It seems like these are real people telling their stories. And there's women that are victims. There are men that are victims. There are people that they got driven into bankruptcy, into debt. They had to get help from in-laws. They had to relocate. I, you know, one of the things I did on this video was try to make those <coughs> videos on study with me to try to Encourage people, if you have to rebuild, to sit down and do the work, to study, to stay motivated. I mean, I don't know what else I can really do. I can't, I can't change your situation, but I thought that was a tool that I could have done. This person is really angry. You can see it. And there was in the video some reports of judges getting shot. They said that there was a lot of violence related to family, law, and divorce court. Married once, short marriage, approximately 14 months, and it cost me over $200,000. Never again. Enjoy your box wine and cats, ladies. Like. Suggesting that divorced women or a lot more women are not going to be able to get married. They're going to have to stay at home and drink cheap wine and hang out with their cat unless things change because guys aren't going to get involved in this whole thing. It says marriage is not a contract between a man and woman, but a contract between the citizen and his government. When the marriage breaks down, all you have worked for, including your children, become state property. And what does it say? And your savings now belongs to government employees to enjoy at strip clubs and restaurants. When you bet on marriage and you lose, you pay, and pay heavy. Do not marry ever. LOL, screw reform, just MGTOW, just go your own way. The US is so corrupt, it's dis disgusting. The saddest part about it is people think they're lucky to live here. You know, I get that all the time, actually, living abroad here in the Middle East. All these comments, all these people tell me all the time, we want to come to America with you. Can you help me go to America? The moral landscape is going downhill. And what, I mean, upsets me so much is I see very little promise from the church, sadly. I really do. I just, just don't see it. Um... This is how I put gas in my Rolls Royce, quote, unquote. Yeah, there was a private detective, I think. Yeah, that they interviewed. 
I'm only 15 minutes in and I've already come to the conclusion that the biggest criminals are those who work within law. Oh, the irony. For someone who can't afford legal representation and doesn't have enough knowledge <coughs> to represent themselves, what else is there for them? Apart from commit murder or suicide, the system traps people and destroys them unless they have money and lots of it. There's this really interesting bit, this quote from a I don't remember who that basically said that you can get justice if you can pay for it. Feminism is cancer, the fuel for the fire. The courts are a circus, the judges are Caligula. I don't know what that is. That might be like a really bad word. I'm sorry if that's a bad word. Uh, the lawyers are the jesters and people are thrown to lions for sport sickening. My ex dragged me into court and Dr. Joe Keenan destroyed my family. My daughter is now 20, a 24 year old lost soul. I have no more tears left. This is from Sophia and Dr. Joe Keenan was one of the people that they evaluate the suitability of people to be parents. So somebody that like kind of, he had a, um, he was a psychologist. He was a psychologist. Dummies are still getting married. I would never get married or divorced in the U.S. Thanks, feminism. If you're headed for a divorce, stay in the family home. Assume anything you write in an email, text, or letter will appear in court. Ask your lawyer for the right questions. And do not let anger or your opinion of fairness dictate your actions. African-Americans had the highest family right around 80% back in the 1950s. Now it is at 28%. Deadbeat dads didn't just come out of nowhere. The independent women stripped them from the fathers by getting out of dependable relationships and by logic raised undependable boys. Oh. Another thing by MGTOW, another thing, don't get married, especially men. Marriage is a career for women and the undoing of men. This is beyond MGTOW. It's blatant corruption. Even if two people want to mutually agree to end their marriage, judges can push them into $100,000 evaluations. What a joke of a system. Ever since I saw the documentary Divorce Corp, I will say I won my divorce case representing myself, and I am now studying to become a paralegal. I will never, ever, never get married again. And this is from Laura. I mean, you never know who these people actually are. This was great. Hats off to the people who exposed this mess so well. Corruption is ripe in Multnomah County. Oh, yeah, it's in Oregon. In Portland, Oregon. I've had my life dismantled from false accusations while helplessly kept from my son while he suffered panic attacks from our separation. I've been systematically wiped out by a handful of judges, none of which have children of their own and are failures at their jobs. Which gender is the one taking advantage of the screwed up divorce courts in the United States. You know, I don't know. I just feel like, what if it's not like men versus women? Like, what if basically the American families, average people are just getting like torn apart for someone's agenda? For, I, I don't know what, you know, for, <sighs> I hesitate even what to say. One thing that they talk about a lot in the video is greed so just simply there's a there's an industry I think they said 50 billion dollar industry so a lot of people are making a ton of money off this but just what I was saying is like what if we're all kind of being duped here it's like I mean I don't know I've heard these stories of you know the sexually liberated women end up having a few abortions and feel really awful about it but it's like so much to deal with emotionally if a person would ever come to regret that decision I mean either you have to go through the whole part of like regretting that and dealing with it emotionally 
or they say for a lot of people it's just easier to kind of join sides with like a ultra liberal worldview and say like you know women should be able to do whatever they want with their bodies and I guess that's like a speaking point when it comes to political agenda I know there was the whole like Milano she was trying to get a bunch of women to refuse to have sex with husbands until they voted against either what like Trump was like a, a previous thing but then after that it was um, in order to vote against or not support or protest the I don't know some statute going through some bill that was up to change the rules of abortion I mean I don't know it's like are people being basically like told that sex and freedom is fine and then when there's unintended consequences then it's like abortion or these other things are the solution and then when that doesn't sit right in people's hearts it's like it leaves them really vulnerable to these agendas that are anti-family that are you know and that these people in these videos are paying the price other ideas I I don't know E Michael Jones is doing some really interesting stuff on basically political control through sexual liberation through pornography that basically if you can just keep people busy enough fighting in divorce court broken enough impoverished enough through divorce courts or if you can get you know guys and women apparently porn is going up way way more among women and people over 65 and so you know get all these people into porn and sucked into porn and so then they're always dealing with that and politically I mean everyone's asleep at the wheel you can do whatever you want I think that's one thing that's being suggested at least by E. Michael Jones if you haven't seen him he's pretty intellectual but pretty interesting to listen to one thing this video completely glosses over and probably intentionally just as every form of American corruption is blamed solely on greed and money is the fact that family courts have been caught red-handed trafficking children for molestation by people involved in the foster care system. See Nancy Schaefer, state representative of Georgia, killed for exposing this fact. Whoa. Michael McDonald, I went through hell in family court and have not seen my own children over a year and a half. After my attorney shot himself right before trial, Went to jail for over six months for trying to call my own children. Lost my house, my job, lost over a quarter million dollars. Do not get married, stay out of the system. And if you already are, read the Five Love Language book. Stay together for the kids' sake. You don't want to go through this limbo hell of family court. You know, at one point, I was really depressed that I had gotten myself fixed. I thought that I had failed at the ability to make something work or I wasn't good enough to find the right woman where I would sacrifice my freedom for her. Well, this is interesting. And start a family. But after watching this, I'm glad I'm fixed. We need to focus on the custody part and putting an end to child custody alimony because you don't need a license to be in love. So just skip that part. The only reason to get a license is if you're going to do it strictly for a business proposition like they did hundreds of years ago. But what happens with custody with a couple that doesn't have a marriage license? Question mark. And that's a great question. If you decide to have a family outside of marriage so you just decide to cohabitate or you decide you want to build a family you feel like this is a broken system what if your partner walks out what if you wake up one day and like your kids are gone the question then becomes is like maybe you have no legal recourse maybe you do maybe you have to i don't know somehow prove that the kids are yours and i don't know file some kind of what what would you file like kidnapping charge I mean I have no idea like maybe someone could share with the 
the community or in the comments about that aspect because I think this awful nightmare of a situation in the divorce courts is perhaps at least some form of representation. If you're in a state where there's like 50-50 custody and that's pretty much the standard, at least you could hope to maybe get 50-50 or 70-30 or something, you know? I mean, there's something there. In the cohabitation family, there's, there's no, I don't know how that works. That's really interesting. Great question. Of this documentary, I help these participants to see their kids. No mother or father deserves that type of parental alienation when they've done nothing wrong. The children ultimately suffer. How can the other parent deny visitation? Question mark. OMG nightmare from Barbara. Want to live the life you work hard for. Don't sign any marriage contract. You want a relationship? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want to live with a woman? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want children? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want grandchildren? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want great-grandchildren? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want a savings? You want savings? Don't sign any marriage contract. You want a house? So this is crazy. This is from Kim. It looks like a woman by the picture. I don't know, but... My lawyer took all my money and never helped me collect one dime of current balance of $479,000 for child support and alimony owed to me. I mean, would you ever imagine that you would owe, like, that you're, you would go through divorce and you would owe half a million dollars? Like, how could you, how do you, what would you have to do to come up with half a million dollars, you know? I mean, if you're making a hundred grand a year and saving twenty percent, okay, it's twenty thousand dollars a year you're saving, so it's going to take you five, five, twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. Like, how many people are making a hundred thousand dollars a year, six-figure incomes? You have twenty percent of your income that's totally disposable, and you just give it to alimony and child payments. At fifty thousand dollars a year take home income it's going to take you 50 years I mean 50 years by the way I filed in 2010 and I'm still in court to this day in June of 2018 eight year trial hiring divorce attorneys that charged me over 300,000 was the biggest financial mistake of my entire life you guys, I don't want to see you guys feel like this. <laughs> I, mean, I got like conned out of like $2,500 one time. Could you imagine like what it feels like to, to regrettably have spent $300,000? Horror film. Most people are not in the income category that can afford $950 an hour plus all the other attendant costs. How the, how the hell do people afford this? Question mark. Kevin Gonzalez, MGTOW forever. Marriage and even relationships are like playing Russian roulette with your life. Prostitution is safer. That's the sad but honest truth. Don't ever get married. So one thing I mentioned before is that I think prostitution will be legal within 10 years in America. Apparently, it's already legal in Australia, and I don't know about other places. I think, I think 10 years it'll be legal. It's way more than 50%. I don't know what that. The system is truly evil. Can you do MGTOW and still have a kid? P.S. Great video. The system is criminal racket of legalized theft and family destruction that is wrecking the foundation of our society, I believe. It has been intentional and calculated for a very long time. Good documentary. Seems to be biased towards women, but still good. I feel like fathers get the short end of the stick in most cases, but we are all screwed. Another MGTOW comment. Shocking. That video of the judge beating up his daughter was disturbing AF as well. So it's interesting because there was a a part of a judge um, like spanking his daughter with 
uh, a belt. And so, interesting because, you know, there's people you can find in Christianity that's, that advocate for, you know, they always quote that, that verse from the Proverbs, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. So, I mean, I really don't know what to think of that, but I did used to work in, like, child services and um, worked with a lot of kids that, like, were drug addicts, ex-prostitutes, victims of different kinds of trauma. And, um, yeah, definitely in Oregon, the statutes are such that even if you speak negatively against a child's character, I believe, like their person and not their actions, that that is considered abusive. So, for example, I guess you can't say, like, you're a liar if a person lies. I don't, yeah, I guess I don't really see what the upside of telling people that they're a liar is unless you, perhaps you really want to warn people, I don't know. I used to be more on the side of like love is truthful and if you really care for people you find a loving way to point out things that you think are going to hurt them long term if they don't correct these like personal flaws or personal sins. Now it's like I guess just as part of the culture it's like maybe that's not acceptable anymore. Maybe that's not love anymore or something. It's just very risky. I mean, people interpret that way different or way differently. So maybe what once, what, like maybe that would have been taken as love, maybe like in a previous generation or maybe in the 90s or something. But now people, they only get offended. And it's not actually a helpful approach. It wouldn't actually, you couldn't really categorize it as love because it's not uh, given in a way that people can receive it. I don't know how. That's true. This is a sign of a degenerating civilization. This fails to point out that family court victimizes men and women have impunity. The entire system is unjust, corrupt, and a racket for lawyers and judges. The, de the decay and corruption have accomplished what our enemies and would-be conquerors could only dream of. This is no longer a country or civilization. It's over and finished. Time to start over. The sleazy relationship between judges and lawyers is infuriating. This is the scariest horror movie I've ever seen. Okay, but 99% of the time this happens to men. With more and more men walking away from marriage, I think the family court system will collapse. Jewelry stores are closing nationwide. Bridal shops are closing. Babies Are Us is gone. Hopefully, family court system will go away as well. Of course, the scam of the century. The UK also has many similar problems in its court system, although there's a lot of good judges and others. Very sad documentary. It's a business. Fraud is a business? If only a fitness evaluation was used before marriage and before having kids, and if only the criteria for positive evaluation was extremely clear and precise. But what made a good parent in 1910 when L. Emmett Holt wrote what made the perfect parent, the care and feeding of children, as you can see here, didn't make a good parent in 1946 when Dr. Spock became a standard setter and doesn't make a good parent today according to Maslisch and Faber and all the rest of the social engineering busybodies of today. Not that Hein Gino was a bad, but you get my point. Jordan Peterson seems to have some solid ideas along those lines. Make your bed and clean your room are good for a start.
pump and dump for life. These are guys that just no relationships, just casual sex for life. 58 minutes, girls hate it when it's flipped. It's a woman that I think didn't see her kids for four years. A lot of guys, they do really feel like that it's, it's not equal, that these videos try to be equitable in the representation, but in actuality that the experiences are pretty pretty one-sided custody. I think 90, 95% of the time goes to women. That's the stat I keep hearing. I don't know. Well, I guess maybe we could find some good statistical information on that. I think one thing I noticed in this video was that there seems to be a large amount of money being transferred due to alimony and child supports. That those are the two main factors. There's this big clause called best interest of the child, which has no standard definition and can be interpreted any which way people want or prefer. It seems like even prenuptial agreements are not able to protect people from the courts once it gets to the alimony and the, um, the child support. Okay, my friends, so that was basically the just overview of going through the comments and seal people's reaction to the Divorce Corp movie. Like I said, you could actually see the movie on YouTube, and it's a swoon goose. It looks like the keywords if you want to watch it for free online. The thing was I just didn't feel like it was right just to like quit it where I did. I think the right thing to do is for those of us who are of the household of faith and know Christ and know God, uh, I don't think we should let the current situation get us down. We need to go one step further. Embrace the brokenness. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. I think that made us a little bit poor in spirit. But we can go. We can uh, continue to work through uh, the Beatitudes. And we can um, try to have a pure heart. Try to be peacemakers. So let's do that real quick. Father, we've seen a lot of stats. We've heard some stories from some people. We've seen uh, movie makers and filmmakers try to consolidate all these large industry and big picture things and even behind the scenes stuff into a manageable, manageable way that we can look at it. Thank you for this. That's helpful for us to know what's going on in our day. I just pray that you would help families. I pray that you would help reform government to serve the people. I don't know which one to pray for more, but God, I feel like really the families are the ones who are the big victims in this situation. So God, I'll pray just for a new outpouring of your spirit. God, for people who are sitting in church and aren't actually saved, God, that you would reveal that to them. I think there's a lot of people like that. Um, for the people who are still just like children in the faith, I pray that you would develop them into mature believers. For the pastors who are scared to talk about this stuff, I pray that you would start helping them discuss these things. Uh, for the people that got hurt as children by some devastating situation, I pray that you would help them as well. Um, you'd help them recover and that they would be able to become healthy and whole and be able to continue out their days in their marriages, with their kids, um, into old age, walkers and gray hair and all that stuff. So may it be, God, please help our people. Please heal our lands. God, we cry out to you. Help us purify ourselves, our minds, and our lives. And God, just please don't let all this pain um, be the end of these people's stories. Amen.